All right, guys. It is yet another absolute, just yuck, depressing, smoked out, just, oh, fuck. Just another, oh, fuck morning here in the end times in the former paradise of the world's most beautiful campsite here by the, the sunny, sunny shores of Lake Baker in Washington State where the little dog and I are, are packing up and moving out, packing up and moving out here on this Friday, September 8th, 2017. Only one reason, because the cops really are running me out of here, but I would be leaving anyway. Um, some absolute, just hopeless, chaotic, literally chaotic journey, thinking I'm going to find any better air on the Olympic Peninsula than I am here. But before I go, let me bring you one last rant. One final rant from... Uh, from the formerly the world's most beautiful campsite and that is my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant which I where I simply opened up my email box to see how uh, this planet is heading directly into a brick wall it's somewhere between 185 miles an hour and 67,000 or 77,000 miles per hour depending on if Donald Trump's at the wheel or not and uh guys i'm not at all sure my batteries on this fucking computer are gonna last or the batteries on this fucking camera or the batteries in this dog and most importantly the batteries in me are gonna last guys i don't know i'm uh i don't know where i'm getting the energy for this rant i i don't know i, I might be disappearing for a while if uh there's not a turnaround pretty quick your old depressed collapsitarian is is on a major downward spiral into yet another fucking crash and burn in the end times. But uh, before I go splat, uh, let me bring you this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant. Now, of course, it goes without saying what, at least on Washington Post Energy and Environment Roundup, and uh, Center for Biological Diversity's Endangered Earth. Uh, you know, what they're talking about are, are these goddamn hurricanes and all of this toxic, uh, j j just, well, toxic apocalypse, the tox apocalypse down there in Texas this week and Florida next week. Uh, so I've already been over this how many fucking times this week. Do you get it? A anyway, I, if the batteries are still here and I feel like talking about this again, I'll come back in a minute. So we're just going to go over here to Manga Bay, to mongabay.com, surveying uh, the planet outside of Texas. And of course, just their, their broken record rant which I've been having for, what, seven years now. Philippine palm oil plan equals corruption and land grabbing, critics say. With its renewed promotion of what it calls its sunshine industry, the Philippine government is looking to cultivate, otherwise known as obliterate off the face of planet Earth about two and a half million acres more of rain forest for new oil palm pla plantations, 98% of which would be on the island of Mindanao which is, uh, you know, so far escaped the planet eaters, but now as the islands, they're just, just running out of islands, you can kiss the island of Mindanao off 
the face of the planet. The, the, day you, the, the day you've heard of it, you can kiss it goodbye. Hmm. The, uh, the, the Philippine government completely in the hand of the uh, palm oil industry is touting the potential revenue brought by palm oil's increasing demand, increasing global demand as a food, cosmetic ingredient, and more and more as a biofuel, biofuel to save the planet from fossil fuels. But critics worry expansion of the country's palm oil industry will benefit large corporations at the expense of forests, water quality, endangered species, and small farmers. From the Philippines to the mountains of... Kyrgyzstan, there you go, which is an important connective corridor for endangered snow leopards. We find government-supported hunting of sheep in Ibex is being blamed for, the, for depleting the food supply of these snow leopards and in turn driving their numbers down. Ecologists say more animals, meaning sheep and ibex, I guess, are being hunted than can naturally reproduce, while government representatives contend the harvest is sustainable. Sustainably harvested Marco Polo sheep in Siberian ibex, kind of like the Krizikstanian version of the sustainably harvested deck from here in the Pacific Northwest. I am going not to insult my intelligence or yours with this story on technologies that boost conservation efforts right now and in the future. Uh, how about the financial case against coal power in Indonesia? A recent report by the Institute of Energy Economics and Financial Analysis warns that Indonesia's coal-based electricity strategy risks wasting $76 billion over the... Uh, the next 25 years. There you go. Indonesia, a major coal producer, relies heavily on large fossil fueled power plants for its electricity. From uh, wherever we just were, Indonesia to right here back in the U.S., mostly the great state of Texas, where these animal rights activists want to apply Animal Welfare Act rules to recreational hunting. And what this is talking about are these goddamn game farms that are very popular, I know, all over Texas and, and I guess some other states where you know what the shtick is. They bring in all of these basically domesticated zoo animals uh, and, and half of them are probably doped up uh, on a bunch of goddamn rhino tranquilizers and they set them out on these private game reserves for these clueless fucking morons to come out there and, and drive out there and shoot these animals uh, 
which is about takes about as much goddamn balls and and spine as, as shooting fucking Betsy the cow in, in a in a kafo. This whole sick fucking twisted energy, and uh, good luck on the uh, on the antelope huggers on that one. Hmm. Never thought of this. Healthy soils, healthy soils can boost food security and climate resilience for millions. Yes, and this is looking at the health of dry land ecosystems. Dry land ecosystems. I wish you could see this goddamn thing crawling up my computer. What the fuck is that thing? Uh, crawling up my damn computer. I ain't about to touch it. Good lord. Uh, Sancho Panza, don't get near this damn thing. Anyway, if you're... I, come on, little guy. You gotta take off. Take off. Jesus. Stinging caterpillars and everything else. Okay. And just in case you were not aware of this. <clears throat> dry land, the, the health of many dry land ecosystems has declined dramatically over recent decades. Largely due to unsustainable farming methods, deforestation, clearance of natural grasslands, and Increasing drought. There you go. Okay, from dry land ecosystems. Let's see. Uh, to shark and ray fishing. I think we have a couple of stories on these. Uh, Researchers using DNA barcoding technology have found that over 70% of shark fins and ray gill plates collected from sellers in multiple countries came from threatened species. Uh, this research suggest, this research suggests that current global shark and reef fishing is unsustainable. Okay, and I guess there's an associated story, fishing mortality of mako sharks. Mako sharks 10 times higher than fisheries estimates. This is what happens when you have, uh, you know, foxes guarding the hen house. It, it's the same reason, uh, you, you know, when, when, when you trust the, the, these goddamn fishery managers, which Derek Jensen would, would call fish murderers to tell you how few fish they're killing. It's like this unadulterated horseshit. You know about these goddamn CO2 emissions. So why don't we go check out, check out the real numbers of mako sharks being slaughtered and we will find about 10 times as many. Uh... Fishing mortality was 10 times higher than estimates based on the catch data reported by the fisheries killing the sharks and 15, time, 15 to 18 times higher than the rate associated with maximum sustainable sustainable yield warning, warning. Bullshit alert. suggesting 
substantial over fishing. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, from that no shit Sherlock story, here's a, some weird story. India and Nepal teaming up to rescue flooded rhinos. You've heard, what is it, like 40 million human climate refugees over there in India and Nepal and Bangladesh and shit. Well, there's not any rhinos in Bangladesh, of course. So apparently 15 of these critically endangered uh, rhinos, these Asian rhinos, have washed away in, in these big monsoons and, and last week. And nobody knows where they are. I would suggest looking for them in some stew pot. It would be my guess. So if anyone, if if a if a one horned, now a no horned rhino comes floating past your house, give me a call and I'll put you on. This is 15 more rhinos we can kiss off the face of the planet. Okay, let's go down to Ecuador. What is shaping up in Ecuador? You know, I almost missed that uh, planet-eating little fucktard, Rafael Correa, who I used to enjoy so much, uh, you, you know, pointing out as being one of the biggest planet-eaters uh, on the planet. And so now Correa, I guess, has turned the reins over to Presidente Lenin Moreno. Lenin Moreno. And uh, so we're now getting some, some uh, environmental report cards from Presidente Moreno and take a wild guess of the grade that he is getting from Amazon Indians in Ecuador. Indigenous communities resist Chinese mining in Amazonian Ecuador. Yes, this is a tribunal uh, of indigenous communities in the Amazon headwaters region of Ecuador has accused the nation's first large-scale mining operation of major human and environmental abuses. This is looking at these two goddamn over-the-top fucking planet-eating open-pit copper mines owned by the, the, these Chinese planet-eaters, obviously, uh, located within the Shuar indigenous community, formerly known as the Hivaro Indians. Charges lodged against the Ecuadorian government and the Chinese consortium with the Ecuadorian government in its pocket include displacement of 116 indigenous people, the destruction of the town of Tundaime, escalating violence, including the death of Shuar leader Jose Tendetsa, discrimination, intimidation, threats, and, of course, worsening environmental degradation. New President Lyndon Moreno's administration has, so far, made no response to the accusations or the demand for redress of grievances filed by the tribunal's leaders. Let's go over there to Borneo, where I, I cannot believe any orangutans still surviving in Borneo, but of the few that are surviving, 80% of Borneo's orangutans live outside protected areas. This new study confirming that orangutan populations have plunged over the past decade. Yes, I already mentioned this story, I think, in Monday's rant, showing up in the mainstream media. This is uh, 
Manga Bay's coverage of the same story, this, this new study by World Wildlife Fund talking about how uh, in 2014 and 2015 that 381 new species of wildlife were located in the Brazilian Amazon and most of them are already on the verge of extinction and of course many species uh, will be you know obliterated off of the face of the planet before they are ever even discovered. Here is some uh, Hopium article about saving uh, some vital jaguar corridor in the Colombian Amazon. Oh, I'm sorry. But San Lucas, besides being home to a critically important jaguar wildlife corridor, is also home to some of Latin America's richest deposits of gold. Mining for gold has damaged the region's lowlands, releasing mercury into the surrounding environment where jaguar teeth are now being found to contain mercury. The race is on to protect the area through establishing it as a new national park. Proponents say doing so would help maintain its rich biodiversity and ensure it retains viable habitat for jaguars and other wildlife. Uh, here is how we're going to save the planet by decreasing our everyday use of plastic straws. If we would just stop using plastic straws, the planet will be saved. And I'm not sure who Jackie Chan is, but whoever the hell Jackie Chan is, he has a martial arts action star. Jackie Chan has joined the fight to for endangered pangolins. Uh, there you go. Quoting Jackie Chan, when the buying stops, the killing can too. So uh, anyway, uh, let's move on from uh, from Manga Bay. Let's go over here to Endangered Earth on uh, from the Center for Biological Diver Diversity, and obviously their uh, number one leadoff story uh, is about the re those refineries spewing at least one million pounds of seven toxic chemicals into the air. <coughs> not even uh, not not even counting the water. Uh, and this is according, and we just talked about this, this is according to the industries spewing them out, claiming one million pounds. The pollutants include benzene, butadine, hexane, hydrogen sulfide, sulfur dioxide, toluene, and xylene. Uh, there you go. Hmm. The petroleum industry seems unwilling to take responsibility for operating safely even as climate change makes some storms like Harvey 
more destructive. Good Lord, it looks like pretty much an all Texas roundup here. Uh, what's next in Texas? Suit fights waiver of environmental laws for border wall. Uh, I guess this is the latest, uh, latest lawsuit where Trump just wants to conveniently, just conveniently waive any environmental review of his 2,000 mile wall. There you go. Uh, maybe the lawsuit. Well, here's some good news. After 40 years, Texas grass gets protection. All right, the Guadalupe fescue, an ecologically important grass in Texas, uh, has 7,000 acres of new habitat, which will probably just be turned over to the fucking cows, to the livestock industry. 7,000 acres of good fescue in Texas bring out the fucking beef cows. Uh, they have some, uh, let's move from Texas over to Nevada where we see some, uh, well, at least temporary good news where court sends destructive pipeline back to BLM after a suit by the center and allies, a judge has ruled that the Southern Nevada Water Authority's controversial $15 billion groundwater pipeline project cannot move forward as planned. The court found that the BLM broke the law by not sh showing how it would compensate for the havoc the pipeline would wreak on wetlands and wildlife. It would siphon almost 8 billion gallons of groundwater yearly uh, from the eastern Nevada desert, including parts of the Great Basin National Park and three national wildlife refuges, and take a wild guess where the water is going to. How about to Los Vegas for all of their fountains. Okay, we have some uh, book reviews. That some more books I need to put, be put in the queue. Let's see, Grand Canyon for sale. Here is uh, a world of three zeros. Here is critical critters and the rights of nature. All right, all kinds of new Bibles of the apocalypse coming uh, out this week. But we're going to wind up with this hilarious story. Trump's Fish and Wildlife Department urged to protect Pacific walrus. Conservation groups, including the center, have urged, urged Trump's Fish and Wildlife Service to protect the Pacific walrus under the Endangered Species Act. Huh. That decision will determine whether the walrus will be given uh, Endangered Species Act protection from the rapid loss of Arctic sea ice caused by human-induced climate change. Uh, who, the f who the fuck are you kidding? Is this a fucking joke? But... We're going to wind up right here on the mainstream of mainstream medias, the good old Washington Post Energy and Environment's weekly roundup. Uh, 
of course, its lead-off story talking about the end of the hurricane drought. Uh, yes, you know, all these climate change deniers. There ain't no climate change. There ain't been no hurricanes in this country for a hundred fucking years. Well, guess what? Uh, find something else to talk about, you goddamn climate change deniers. The drought is over. Okay, this is their spin. Several stories in today's uh, other mainstream media news. EPA under Donald Trump shrinks to near Reagan era staffing levels. This is more than 400, more than 400 uh, EPA uh, environmental protectors have been given pink slips or if they have half a brain just resigned uh, from this all-out assault upon the EPA and it's now the size of Ronald Reagan's EPA and I guess it's just and there's no end in sight from the hemorrhage from the hilariously uh, titled Trump Environmental Protection Agency. And here's their story uh, about Trump gutting gas mileage standards. Speaking of uh, gasoline, since Harvey, gas prices at the pump are up 50 cents a gallon. No shit, sir. Uh, this is their spin on sounding almost an identical headline uh, to Center for Biological Diversity. Chemical companies have already released one million pounds of extra air pollutants thanks to Harvey. We just went over this. Anybody who thinks that it was that it was one million pounds, you know, come on. Oh God! I had this story on uh, Monday uh, about Donald Trump wanting to eliminate the chemical safety board while during an unfolding crisis at a flooded chemical plant. So, I'm not sure who these experts are. <clears throat> We're going to just wrap up here. I think I think we anyway, I think we get it. Experts. Experts are worried about volatile chemicals being released in in Houston, but not alarmed. Well, I mean, it depends on who the experts are. Anybody with a fucking brain. We're, we're a little bit worried about turning Southeast Texas into one big Superfund site, but we can't be alarmed. We cannot be alarmed. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this week's Ecological Meltdown Roundup Rant in my final rant from the former world's most beautiful campsite and me and the little dog before the cops really do get here to kick us out I'm gonna pack up the old tent pack up my little propane stove and pack up the gas sucking truck and head off into the hellfire and brimstone from one volcano to another 
And guys, as I say, I, I don't know where the fuck my life is heading. When I start up this fucking truck in about one hour and pull out of here, I have no fucking idea where I'm going to sleep tonight. I'll figure that out tonight. I will try to uh, bring you a few more rants, but uh, guys... You know, I'm losing heart. Smoke them if you got them. We are. So fucked. Are you ready to pack up this truck and get the hell out of here? Bye, guys.